Hey, what's up YouTube? So this is actually take two of the video. I actually recorded it in the beginning and then I uploaded it and then found out that it had the awakened spell echo effect on the mic and that it was doubling up my voice recording. I think it's because of the camera that I recently got and sometimes it like tries to act as a microphone too. So it's like fighting for control or something. I have no idea, but anyhow, this will be the second time going through it. So it will be a lot more laser focused now that I know what I want to talk about. But basically in the recent days, I have swapped back the Penance brand after trying out Blade Vortex for a bit. And at this point, after the coping mechanisms have faded, because I was pretty much coping by saying that Blade Vortex could be better, it had better single target, perhaps because it came out faster, it had maybe better clear because of the explosion chains in AoE. But... In the end, after coming to my senses and playing Penance Brand again, it is just not true. Penance Brand's single target literally completely destroys Blade Vortex every other way possible. Like It will kill stuff faster. I mean, it's just better. And it's also a brand skill, so you don't need to stand still and be melee. And then we also have the issue of... The clear of the map is actually not that great with Blade Vortex when compared to Penance Brand. Penance Brand just has better, um, I mean, it's just a ranged skill, so you can cast it when, for Blade Vortex, you would have to run up to the mob or a pack in the corner or something. And it also has insane attachment range. So, in the end, Blade Vortex is not as good as Penance Brand. Penance Brand is actually the best skill. It's the best overall skill for aura stackers in terms of beginning, the middle, the end and forever until something changes with the skill or yeah but skill is very very pleasant to play with but for today's video we're gonna go do talk about the gear review and then we're gonna have a ranking of nebuluses for what's actually the best nebulous for a penance brand because the answer might shock some people in the end it is not double damage and i'll explain why later on and then we're gonna show an eight mod fear that i was able to complete now, whether I did it deathless or not, that you will find out later, but it's probably one of the hardest fears I've ever done, I think, besides the fact that it didn't have minus max, but I didn't get hit, so it's okay. But let's get on with the gear overview. So for the gear overview, we have the exact same nebulous. So this nebulous will actually be changed to one that will be determined once there's a good enough one on the market. Then we have the exact same helm. This helm just can't change because it's actually a mirrored item. Then we have the amulet. I recrafted the amulet to have flat ES from area F effect and area damage because you just don't need those stats for Penance Brand and it's just useless. Then Call of the Brotherhood, I have a Discipline Aura effect one now. Now you might be wondering how am I getting the fire damage and I'm actually running Herald of Ash instead of Herald of Thunder. I just wanted to try this out because I feel like Herald of Ash might have some better clear for Penance Brand. I'm not really sure empirically if it's actually true or not, but I'm going to test it out a little bit more. Herald of Ice we still have. So we're running Herald of Purity, Herald of Ice, and Herald of Ash. And now we also have, we still have the same Call of the Brotherhood, the same one we bought at the very start of the league. And then we have this glove swap here. We have the mapping gloves, and then we have the... Hands of the High Templar um, plus 6 spell crit gloves. Now the reason for using all of this is because this allows us to get a lot more ES. You can see my ES is 5,149. And with this amount of ES, it is pretty hard to actually die on boss fights. Especially when you're able to combine it with a belt. Like this is a pretty bad belt that I bought for like 80 chaos. The only reason I bought this belt was because I need to strengthen Dex for Headhunter. But a lot of people can't actually replace Headhunter because the belt has too much stats on it. So therefore, with this pair of belt and the crafted Chaos Res, you have like 16% positive Chaos Res. Now, if I basically wasn't such a cheapskate because I'm so poor, I would have bought a better belt with max roll Chaos Res or something like that. And then I would have also gotten a jewel with a Chaos Res. But this jewel has some ES. You can get some ES, multi, maybe you can get... a fire damage to spells or something or anything you want i'm not sure if you can get chaos res actually but basically you just wear a stygian gives you a lot more es if you really wanted to go big you would use a crusader i think or whatever the percent es one stygian is but i think that's pretty expensive 
it is actually pretty hard to get it with strength and dex so kind of hard to do but if you could get that that would be insane you probably have like 54 5500 es and in order to get more ES, I would pretty much have to actually wear like boots that had more ES, like 80 to 90, because this is a Conjure boots pair. So at this point, I'm trying to push for 100, right? So I kind of want to, whenever I do bosses, I want to do the, the gear swap. So when you want a boss, you want to swap your gloves out to Hands of the High Templar. And then you want to use Flame Dash instead of Smoke Mine, because it's just a much better skill. And lastly, you want to swap out your Headhunter or whatever belt you may have to a Stygian. And if you already have a good rare belt with ES and resist, then it should be fine. And basically, that's all you need. And then this character will be pretty tanky at this point. Like this amount of ES. Every amount of ES for us matters a lot more than any other build. Like each point of life for us is absolutely crazy when compared to other builds. Because we have 90% res and then we actually have this much like true physical damage reduction. And we also have a bunch of evasion. So that means every single point of life is really, really important and worth probably double most other builds, especially for elemental damage. But for our cluster jewel and jewel situation, a lot of people will still ask me about this. So I'm going to show this again and talk about why 7556 is such a god jewel. You have 15% here. You have 4% on a travel node here. You have 5, 15% here. And then 14 percent here so it's 48 percent for one two three four five six seven points so usually like you ask like oh what's a good glorious vanity a good glorious vanity is one that has over six percent per point you spend to get it so if you have like 30 percent for five points that's good and the more points the better because like, if you only spend like 24 like say one is only like 12 percent for two points you're wasting the gem socket because there's the opportunity cost of the gem socket, right? So you have to take that in mind. So you kind of want your Glorious Vanity to have at least like 20% aura effect before choosing to take it. Even if it's like 12% for 2 points. And then lastly, the 7556 has this thing, which is 10% of physical damage converted to lightning damage. And this means that for our helmet, we no longer need to run Fizz to lightning. So we can use Inspiration and Awaken Cold Pen. So before I had to use Fizz to Lightning and I wouldn't be able to have Cold Pendant since I have a four link helm. So this actually node is just a miracle. It's on the best Glorious Vanity. So this Glorious Vanity should literally be worth its weight in gold. So make sure to pick one up if you can or try to save up for one. It's probably a late, late game upgrade, but it's definitely worth every bit of the money. So we still have Brand Loyalty, Remarkable, Holy Brand Loyalty, Holy Conquest, and then so we have three X Remarkable RMRs and one Brand Loyalty, Holy Conquest. Now I wanted to go over really fast about why it's important to have like Cold Pen on these jewels. So like at this point in the league, a lot of people corrupt a lot of these Brand Loyalty Remarkables so that you can get 1% reduced reservation of skills. And what does this mean? It means that there's a lot of cold pen ones out there, a lot of CB ones, a lot of LMA, LE pen. So when you try to shop for those, even if you can't afford the RMR, you should try to buy ones with 1% cold pen. Because if you think about it, it adds up over time. You get like one here, two here, three here, four, five, five percent cold pen, and then you can get some on your jewels like this. So it, and then you could probably get this on jewels that are one multi RMR. Getting two multi RMR with cold pen is probably quite impossible for most people's budget. But basically that means you get like what, like 12% pen for free. And 12% pen is literally like almost a, more than a quarter. It's like almost 30% of an awakened cold pen gem. So it adds up really fast. So that's how you can like min max your character for like relatively cheaply because most of these jewels will not be that much more expensive. You see, for me personally, I have a CB first among, and I was still trying to find another purposeful replenishing with uh, arm with a uh, damage pen, but I haven't been able to find it. And these jewels, on the other hand, are just too expensive to be corrupting, so there's not many people who actually corrupt them, because most people do not corrupt like 15 to 20 exalt jewels trying to hit RMR. But in the end, that's probably going to be one of my goals, super late game or long term. If I'm still playing this build, then it is to corrupt some of these 1520x clusters. Because if you corrupt enough of them, you will get it sooner or later one day. 
I also have this RMR <laughs> Vengeful Commander Widespread Destruction. I don't know how good this one is. It's, you're pretty much trading 1% RMR for Snowstorm. Because I would be running Snowstorm over Widespread. So it's 8% more damage loss. But at this point it's okay. It's a lot nicer to not have to worry about RMR. Because I'm not running um, Conqueror's Efficiency. Because Brand Duration or Duration is actually bad on Penance Brand. So I actually opted to s uh, skip it. Because I'm pretty much only sacrificing 2% mana reservation for like 30% multi and not having the duration, which I highly value. Because not having that duration makes bossing feel a lot smoother in that the damage comes out faster. Now on the topic of bossing, we will talk about now the nebulous. This item is always like such a point of contention because there's actually so many different variants. So for the Nebulous, this is an age-old item. It's core on the build. I don't know how I feel about the item being irreplaceable. It is kind of fun having rare items and chase mirror items, but I guess Nebulous is pretty much a rare in terms of how many combinations it could possibly have. So let's go to POE trades. So since the dawn of time, the Nebuluses have had a hierarchy. And at the top was this Nebulous. Explode. So you can see here, this is the old Explode Nebulous, and it is now 40 exalts. This is a high fall from grace. Explode Nebulous used to be around like one to two mirrors minimum. Some of the more popular leagues, it was three mirrors. Probably the most expensive, unique item there was. But how the mighty have fallen, and why have it fallen? You can read the text here. Enemies you kill have a 15% chance to explode dealing a tenth of their maximum life as physical damage, meaning that explosion chains will be a lot more unreliable. 15% is pretty paltry and low, like tenth of their maximum life as fizz damage is pretty high, but not having a 100% explode chance feels really, really bad. So only way you could really make this work is to run maybe two of these explode nebuluses if you ever get around to dual wielding, and then it might be worth it. But regardless, this Nebulous has really fallen from grace, and I would probably say it's worse than double damage for sure. And now we have the next one that's always at the top, and it is Spells have chance to deal double damage. So this one is usually the second most expensive one. So nowadays it's like 18 exalts plus 3% quality. So it's actually pretty cheap. So it's like 18, 20 exalts depending on the time of day. And for these ones, this is actually still, I believe, best in slot for Spark or any spell echo abilities that you end up casting a lot and where you have a lot of hits because this would just be 10% more damage. So when you see this mod, spells have a 10% chance to deal double damage. In pop, in is just calculated as 10% more damage. So you can pretty much just attribute it to, yes, I'm doing 10% more damage, but it's inconsistent and I have to be casting a lot for it to be like that. So that brings us to the point of why this scepter is not really that great for Penance Brand. Now Penance Brand, when you do double damage for the explosion, you literally just one shot the boss and it's way overkill. And in addition for mapping and bossing, it is inconsistent. You don't want to just like randomly have this huge overkill. You want the boss kills to feel consistent. Although it is fun to sometimes one shot the boss that you normally wouldn't have been able to, but... More times than not, consistency is key. So it would feel a lot better to have one of these nebuluses. And it is really not that big of a damage loss. Because I plugged it in into the calculator and it was probably around 5% if you have like a 25 plus multi um, nebulous. And it obviously will depend on how much what's it called, how much multi you currently have. So if you have 300% multi, uh, Nebulous could be almost like 10% more damage. Or not 10% more damage. It could be like more than what it would be for other people. So you can see that these ones have two mods on, so they're pretty good. Now, these elemental damage rolls are pretty bad because if you consider our Nebulous, our Nebulous pretty gives us 600% elemental damage. So 18% on top of that is a paltry amount. But it's still good to have another mod, so like this one is pretty good, this one is not bad. If you can find a 3 modded one, like one with like chaos speed or something. Now this one's pretty cool as ES, but it's 70 exalts. So with this Nebulous, 
I think um the what's it called the consistency will be a lot lot better. There's also another one here that's uh gain lightning has chaos damage. So these are like these ones are pretty rare. Like it's hard to find a lot of them. Like these are pretty good ones because you can get like up to six percent. But they're actually relatively cheap, right? So this is like almost six percent more damage, but six percent more damage is chaos damage. It also has some all attributes, so this could be a pretty uh, budget option. You can see these are like one exalt or so. Not that many people know about it. Like this one's pretty crazy, right? You have fire damage to spells and gain lightning. So this one will be really good, and it will be consistent too for penance brand. And then, well, this was a three modded one for two X. See, there's some pretty uh, decent ones out there. And then I think there's one other one that I think is pretty good, which is damage penetrates. Elemental resistance. This one is pretty rare actually. Some of these are actually like Rare so if you could ever find some of these mods mixed together with multi it could be better. So damage penetrates 5% So this is like 5% pen and you can see this one's like not too bad This one's like too modded but this mod here a lot of people wonder this mod does not get scaled by your aura effects So don't get baited like I did if you try it out on pop it does not get scaled so like some of these are relatively cheap, right? So there's a lot of different budget options for all people. And like if you can get any of these mods that I showed you, like these damage pen, gain lightning as extra chaos, or multi together, or cast speed. Even cast speed is pretty good. Like cast speed, you can actually get really high on this. And I was actually surprised when I looked at it. So there's a wide variety of nebuluses out there that we can use. And all of them are pretty solid like 15 percent cast b or wait is this are these all corrupted well i guess you can get like 12 percent max non-corrupted so you could test that out all of these are should be relatively affordable in the end it makes the build more budget actually right since we don't need a double damage scepter a like double damage scepter's damage for how penance brand works is just overkill so personally i would stick with multi and i will probably swap my scepter over to multi but if you're playing like Spark or any other spell echo skills, it is very important to, um, what's it called, to get a double damage scepter if you can afford it because it would just be a lot more damage overall. But now I wanted to showcase a Feared with some of the hardest mods that I've ever done. And the Feared is something that, it doesn't really matter what the mods are in all essence once your damage is high enough because the mobs won't be able to do anything. At most you'll dodge a few things. The hardest fears are probably always going to be like minus max, AOE, multi proj, any life bots, action speed is pretty bad too. But this one had some AOE, multi proj, and monster life, and some other shenanigans. Oh yeah, and 60% regen, which means that I can't run RF. So my damage is pretty much cut in half in the video. And it still went pretty well. Now we do this like bet and twist chat all the time if I would die or not. And the answer might surprise you. So I hope you enjoy the clip. Yeah, I don't know who it is. A bunch of random dudes everywhere. I have nothing more to give. Oh well, the doubters lost. Or Anyhow, I hope everyone enjoyed that deathless kill. It was pretty solid, pretty good. Like, I was actually surprised it went so well. Not being able to run RF, then having monster life and multi proj and AoE. A lot of times the fear just comes down to what comes out first. The fight can actually vary so much in difficulty. 
If you get like the synthesis mob first, that thing takes forever to kill and the other stuff comes out. It's just a nightmare. And then Cheyula sometimes if you have bad chaos res just like completely destroys you. But that's why we have the bossing belt. And I highly recommend people who want to level and they aren't doing five ways to um, buy a bossing belt, get a different glove set up and you should be a lot better. And make sure to swap the movement skill from smoke mine to flame dash. Smoke mine is not good at bossing. It is the best mapping skill for movement, but flame dash is king. It comes out so much faster while doing boss fights. Now I stream every day on Twitch and I'll probably be trying to level up this character to a hundred. And then I will be trying to do these things called blood fill vessels. So I kind of want to try to get my own mirror. Saw a few people get it, but I honestly believe it's fool's gold. By the time you get the mirror, you're probably going to go broke, but I don't know. I got pretty lucky yesterday. I actually, when I recorded the video, I actually had a paradox guy sold for 20 X and I had a bottle faith. I sold for 13 X. Then I had a watcher's eye. I sold for 18 X and that's pretty much what I got yesterday. Oh, and I had another watcher's eye that I sold for like six X and those were from watcher's eyes that I got from samurai's eye card from the inscribed ultimatum. So pretty lucky day yesterday. But that's also something to keep in mind while playing PoE is that some days you just will find a lot more currency. So don't get discouraged. If you keep grinding away, you will have those outlier days where you find like a wake and multi strike or a wake and cast on crit. And then you can find like some other stuff. You'll find a trial master, drop a hate forge glove, then you find a head on her. Maybe not to that extreme, but generally PoE is a game if you're not doing like consistent crafting where a lot of your currency will come in spikes from a expensive item. Although it's a lot more consistent nowadays with the Atlas passives. But, but I'll be farming more betrayal tomorrow um, and then trying to get a hundred and we'll see what happens or today because this is my second time recording it. But anyhow, everyone, thanks for watching and I hope you find more mirrors than I do. And if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe and see you later and see you next time.